Welcome to the tutorial for laying out and filling in the texture for the UVs of the vehicle assignment for 281 Pipelines class. So when last we left off, we had the UVs sorted out for this particular vehicle. And a reminder again not to hand in this particular vehicle, but your own. This is just a sample of what you can do. First thing we want to do is uh, export this image. And we want to do that so that we can start painting over and filling in these um, cutouts of where the UVs are with imagery and then saving that image as a texture and then reading it back into the car. So this is effectively a blueprint of what we need to fill in to, um, to, to realize and color in the DeLorean. And we do that by coming into the UV editor Again, up here, Windows, UV Editor. And then you want to click on the Polygon menu. And at the very bottom, you should have UV Snapshot. And because it doesn't quite fit in the window, I'm going to move this up, click on Polygon menu again, and now you can see it. Down here at the bottom, it says UV Snapshot. Open up the, uh, the, the options for that. And make sure that you have these numbers plugged into your export which is what you're going to be doing. Size X and size Y should be 512 by 512. You should have this selected as a JPEG. And you should have a 0 to 1 UV range, which means just this corner, not any of these other corners of the UV map. And uh, I recommend that you browse to somewhere like your desktop where you know exactly, um, you know exactly what we're going to be saving. So if I go to my desktop, I'm going to type in UV underscore snapshot and it should save from there. When you press OK, you should actually see it pop up on uh, your, your, uh, your desktop. Please validate that it's there. I actually have mine running here. Let's see UV snapshot. There we are. And that allows me to bring it into Pixlr. Let me start this all over again. I was running through it as a test earlier but let's do this fresh so pixlr p-i-x-l-r dot com no e and when you press return you've got this nice little online version of photoshop and what you need to use is not pixlr express but pixlr editor so launch the web app click on that button and when it gives you the options to create a new image or open image from computer, open the image from the computer, go up to your UV snapshot and open it up. It should look like this. So this is this is pretty nice. Um, you're going to be using Pixlr's layers right here. Pixlr has layers just like Photoshop, just like Maya, and it's uh, effectively a way for you to have several separate sections of the image that you're working on that allow you a much greater degree of freedom uh, so that you're not just dealing with one image and when you make a mistake you can't undo it. So for each of these little kind of let's just let's call them you know color in the lines if you will um, you want to bring in an image and then paste it over exactly these lines and uh, the best way to do that is to create a layer uh, for every one of those images. So for the side of the car, I'm going to create a layer. For the top of the car, create a layer, tire, yada. And that gives me a very complex and very malleable bit of art that's very forgiving if I make a mistake on one layer, it doesn't affect the others. So uh, of the things you want to do is be very careful that you don't inadvertently close the tab on this, uh, on this program because unfortunately there's no way to get your work back. That's the one unforgiving part of this. Uh, effectively free version of Photoshop but you can of course save your work which you should do often and if you begin saving your work and it allows you to save it in Pixlr format you can actually have it uh, saved with all the layers so uh, PXD is uh, layered Pixlr image and for the duration that you're working on this you could say uh, this is the this is the best way to work DeLorean texture and at the very end, you should save it as a JPEG. So let's begin. 
First thing we need to do is find a good picture of the side of a DeLorean. And for that, I've already gone into uh, my searches and try to take a look for different DeLorean images. The problem is when you go into uh, the, the, the internet to look for the, the car, a lot of the images you get for these cars, uh, especially with the, the history of this being a famous movie car, you're gonna be flooded with all these images that are actually unusable. And let me take a moment to describe why. Uh, this is in perspective. It's kind of unusable for, for our purposes. We want something that is orthographic. We want something flat. We don't want something necessarily very, uh, uh, you know, with, with, with cool lighting and perspective. Something that makes the picture itself quite attractive is actually contrary to our efforts to try to get a good side image, a rather uh, antiseptic, static side image. This is unusable as well because the door is open. Um, this is unusable for perspective reasons. This is unusable also. I'd have to do a lot of cutting out and kind of modifying. I have to do rotations and scaling. So really we want the most boring images possible. And when you look at profile, like the front of the car, perspective works against us. It's warped this image. It makes it look cool, but it's warped the image. It's, it's unusable for us. This is a little closer to what we need. Uh, the reflections of the gullwing doors on the roof is, and the hood is a little weird, so I'm not going to go there. Um, but you want to start looking for things that don't have a lot of direct lighting. This has sort of overcast lighting. You don't want any real obvious hot spots on the car. Uh, you, you, this is gold. If you can get a picture of this sort of outdoor without a lot of uh, obvious uh, lighting coming down from like a, a hot spotlight or a hot sun, that's going to be more usable. So here's something close to what it is we're looking for. Overcast day, diffused lighting. Um, it has the windows in it. It's, it's, you know, it's got a pretty nice image all the way around. If possible, try to get on a web page that allows you to see every angle of this car in the same photo shoot, if possible. So here we have automotive, uh, Automobile Magazine. That's a good possibility that it has all the images I'm looking for. Not necessarily for uh, uh, just the front, but maybe for the side and the top. Because uh, things like this, where they're just giving you the statistics on the car and kind of uh, giving you a presentation of, okay, this is the DeLorean, here's the top, here's the front. Um, it, it, it may be a better find for you to go through places like Car and Driver Magazine or Automobile Magazine. This is certainly taking its time. Okay, unusable, unfortunate. They went for gorgeous and it doesn't suit our purposes. There's a nice side shot, another nice side shot. If I go in and look for other keywords, um, such as DeLorean profile, sometimes I can get some much nicer shots. So DeLorean profile is a good place to go. Uh, you can also type in uh, DeLorean stats or whatever car you're looking for. And again, you should be looking for, I'm dealing with a rather famous car, so I just type in DeLorean and there's kind of one DeLorean. If you're looking for a particular car, like a, a you should know the name of it. If it's a, if it's a Ford, that's a very um, long lasting car. Uh, it's quite a storied history with all the different variations of a Ford car. So know the specifics of what you're looking for. Hey, look at that, shoebox garage. Um, and these are unusable because this is just color. This is not an actual picture. This is a, another person's 3D model. That's a rendering. So all this stuff really isn't what we're looking for. We're looking for some nice side shots of the car in diffuse lighting. This has a little bit of direct sunlight on it. Not a lot, but that's okay. And trying to, uh, uh, trying to get it all in one photo shoot if you can. And uh, the more the... In some cases like this, I'd spend about 10 more minutes just looking for different images. This is quite attractive, but it's such a hot spot right here. So let's just for the time being look at uh, this image. So I'm going to go into view image, uh, or better yet, if you go into your search and you just click on images, you can also then go into tools and you want to go to size large. And the reason is you do not want to, you do not want to scale up your images. You want to start with large images and maybe scale them down, but do not go to 
uh, an image that's just good looking and you're willing to start compensating for it. My, meaning scaling it up, rotating it, grabbing, uh, grabbing some section of it and then um, rotating it and mutating it. Don't do that. Just go for something that kind of does the job for you. This has some hot lighting here. This is obviously a studio shoot, but it's kind of what I'm looking for. BOTB, good website for kind of the, the, the basic statistics of the car. So from here, this is, you know, I do not want to talk to you. Let's chat. Let's not. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I can either grab this image. I could probably do so if I start noodling around with save image as. I can take a screenshot. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways of getting this image. But I'm going to go for something that is a little more readily available for me. So it looks to me like this image is... Pretty good. So we'll start with this. Yes, hotspot, etc. But let's just, for the purposes of this, um, DeLorean side, fine. Just jump in and start manipulating and laying things over our existing uh, UV sets. <clears throat> so go back to Pixlr. I've got my UV layout. I want to go into Open Image, DeLorean side. And here we have DeLorean side. So now some of the tool sets, the lasso tool is pretty good and it allows me to kind of click and then hold down my left mouse key and just drag with a certain amount of uh, forgiveness around this image. I don't want to be too, too precise or too precious. And with that selected, I can control C, copy, and then move this out of the way, click on my UV layout and control V, paste. So what you want to do before you start scaling this down when you've initially just placed the image is you can come up here to the layers and make sure you have this selected. This is obviously a visibility uh, checkbox here. Uh, if your background is locked, you can kind of double click that and it'll become unlocked so that everything is malleable. But I've come up here and renamed this to side. You could call it side layer just to be uh, precise. and when you click on that layer, you now have the ability to mess with its opacity if you come down to this toggle uh, icon here. Click on it, and the opacity is at 100. You can slide it down so it's about, say, 50. So now what you're able to do is see behind this DeLorean image. And with your um, square marquee tool selected, you can come up to um, Edit and go down to something called Free Transform, which I like to, to mess with. And this is going to allow us a very basic scaling uh, control. Since the image of the DeLorean actually exceeds the boundaries of this small square, you can see that the controls exceed that boundary as well. But to scale this uniformly, since we do not want to mess with its proportions, remember we've been very diligent about uh, making sure that the, uh, the shoebox garage was proportional to the uh, blueprints, we then could assure ourselves uh, continuity in the model. Now we're putting a texture on the UV snapshot, which we took pains to make sure was also proportional. And so this should fit. And when you come up here to the corner control and hold down the shift key and drag it ever so slightly, you can see that it uniformly scales down. Now you can click in the picture without losing those control handles, which means you're still manipulating the image and bring it down to about where you need it. And then come up and scale it up. If you, uh, we actually want to exceed the boundaries of this texture ever so slightly in all the directions. So if I can just barely get that over the line, then I'm going to have a, a nice little matchup. You see, what I'm, what I'm going for right now is the roof. You can see where the back window is and the driver's side roof. I'm trying to make it so that as best I can fit in the, 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 the tire walls and also fit in the roof. So we'll call that done for now since it's still a layer and I can bring that opacity back up to 100. So let's just quickly see what that does. You come up here to UV layout and go to save. You can actually save this as a JPEG UV layout. Um, I like to honestly still do versions and you can press OK to save it out UV layout one. And then when you pop back into Maya, you can 
get out of the UV editor window, come up here to Windows, and Rendering Editors, then go to Hypershade, and let's give this its first shader. And we will quickly stick that image onto the shader, and you can, you can get pretty nice feedback very quickly using this method. So we come down here to Lambert, create a new Lambert, and Lambert number two, rename this car underscore shader, and click the object, right click on the shader, apply material to selection. Now we come into the color, You should see this quickly pop onto the car. Now we're starting to get somewhere. Look at that. Already, we're starting to fill in and uh, do the assignment of, this is now looking like a recognizable DeLorean, but uh, look at how much we didn't have to model it, but the texture itself is intoning a lot more detail than there really is. And our job of trying to make sure that there's no um, black pixels or that the window is stretched out here to the top of the roof. All that's been kind of taken care of. Um, and this is, of course, we're not done by any stretch of the imagination, but already you can see how far along we're, we're coming with the texturing taking care of filling this car model out. So let's go back to Pixlr and uh, continue with some other parts such as now you have the luxury, in fact, we can get rid of DeLorean side here. And if you want to keep all your references up at the same time, that's fine. Uh, I like to clean this stuff up. You, you know, you get this, uh, I've got this very large kind of uh, black section that's hovering into the other UV sets. Do I need to cut this off? Not really, because I can create the layer that uh, the layer that is going to be the top UV here, the top, the roof of the DeLorean, I could just put that in a layer above the side, but for my own purposes, I want to keep this as clean as possible. So let's bring the layers out here, kind of stretch it down so that it makes a lot more sense. Uh, you can actually create new layers, new layer styles. Um, if you click on this icon here, it creates a new layer for you, and then you can, but every time you open something up, it, uh, it actually should um, bring in that image for you. So there's going to be a little bit, going to be a little bit of drama or a little bit of hunting, rather, uh, when you try to look for the top of your car. DeLorean top and go to images and just see roughly what we have. Well, that's not bad. Um, the reason you want to get all your images from the same photo shoot if possible, looks like this is this a possibility as well, uh, is because it's going to have the same lighting conditions all around. Now, as nice as the shot is that I have for the side of the car, the back of this car is pretty cool. It's a toy. That's fine. You can actually, if, if yours is a fantasy vehicle, if yours is a uh, pre-World War II vehicle and you only see them in museums, sometimes as a Plan C, you can go in and see if there isn't a toy made of it. Uh, but you want to get things under the same lighting conditions. And if you choose this image uh, or this image, yeah, they're in perspective. We know we can't use them, but let's just say that you did. The other problem is that you need to be matching the lighting. And this is outdoors, very bright. And this is indoors, very controlled. So it's actually a different color of gray. And to match these two, you're going to see such an obvious difference that it's just not going to look realistic. So that's the point of trying to find this all in one photo shoot, if possible, which is why you want to turn your attention to um, Car and Driver magazine, where they just say, here's the statistics on the DeLorean, and here's a, a photo shoot of uh, all the, Im the same images. Because it's not really about gorgeous, it's more about statistics and uh, exactly what it looks like from the front of the side. So let's go with... Um, Let's do this. Did I already choose that top view? Yeah, there's kind of a nice top view. The gull wings are open here, so actually, unfortunately, that's useless. This one it looks pretty nice. Let's take a look at that. And that is DeLorean. Okay. Nice name. View image. Okay. Save image as DeLorean top JPEG. Let's open it up here. 
and there we are. So the same thing. Now remember, we only need half of this car uh, top. We don't need the whole the whole thing. So what you can do is just kind of um, trek around this. So your lasso tool is going to bring in the whole thing. And Control C, just copy. Move this to the side. Control V. All right. Once again, I want to come in here and I want to name this layer top. And then I want to go in and manipulate this entire thing by going to free transform, holding down the shift key, coming up here to the corner uh, controller and squeezing it down. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? I forgot to come in here and actually mess with the opacity. So let's come up here and use the undo. Yes, it has an undo. Wonderful. So with the top layer, opacity, bring it down to 50, whatever you need. Now let's manipulate it. Let's see, I keep pressing Control T for my Photoshop command to do the free transform, and it opens a new tab. Ha <laughs> ha. So uh, free transform, Control T. Well, it should have bloody worked, and it didn't. And I'm going to lower this, kind of shrink it on down, drag it over, and I want to fit this into uh, my needs, but I'm noticing that this is the wrong direction. This is actually flipped. So it's pointing to my right, and I need it to point to my left as per the um, top-down projection that I did. Uh, that's okay, because also with Free Transform, if you kind of move your cursor near the corner and you don't get this diagonal arrow, you in fact get a small curly cue here. Hold down the Shift key, and you're able to kind of pop rotate this in 45 degree increments. And now that looks pretty good. And it looks like it's also going to kind of fit. Remember, the, the window here was taken care of in our side view. So what I'm going to try now is just fit the roof, complete with this little tiny minute line, and scale that up, and try to fit as much as I can in there, and then delete the half I don't need. And let's bring this back to 100% opacity. So click on the op opacity and drag that up to 100 again. And it's kind of knocking out the picture of the side image. Delete. All right, kind of nice. And I'm going to save this again. Go into layout number two. OK, save, go into Maya. And what's nice is that you can come up here to Window, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. And because you already have this thing assigned, you can actually just kind of drag down to where that texture is, Car Shader, and go to the uh, assignment of the texture. And instead of one, type in two and it should update. So you start to see this thing update slowly over time. It looks pretty good, and we're getting closer and closer to completing it. Okay, checking back in here. I've done a little work offline and actually lost my pixeler work. Had to re quickly redo it, but it gave me a chance to kind of go over a couple of things here. First of all, I've uh, read in a tire. I've uh, put in kind of the the, the front and the back of the car as well as the undercarriage and make sure that I'm layering and naming all of these different pictures. You can, uh, a couple of shortcuts here, you can actually open an image uh, and if you come over here to layer, you can actually um, uh, open image as a layer and it will immediately put it into your existing um, work. So. Some of the things that I wanted to uh, offer up that, that may be sort of helpful details is when you get it all together, look over your image. Now, there's, there's kind of an error in this image. First of all, um, these are not all the same resolution. Now, the top and the front uh, could use a little massaging, and I'll do that in a minute. And the front is too blurry, considering the crispness of the back and the tire and the, the side of the car. Uh, this is a little too blurry, and that's because I, when I was looking for the rest of these images, uh, this image of the DeLorean from the front was too small. And so I went out and I found, and this is the undercarriage, I just grabbed kind of a basic, vague um, 
underside of a car. It doesn't really matter that I grab the DeLorean underside. No one's going to see it. Uh, so I grabbed this image instead, and I saved it. And I'm now going to read it in. So in this case, I'm going to go over to, to Layer and Open Image as Layer and come in and get my much larger... Whoops, that's the old front image. I don't want that. So it gives me a good chance to show you how to get rid of different layers in Pixlr. You can left-click on the layer you don't want and just drag it on down to the bottom of the screen where you should... Well, this... There you go. The, the web browser itself was not allowing to enough room to see it, but uh, you can actually stretch the size of your uh, layer window up and down so that it can accommodate what you're looking for. History is also a separate window. These are all things you can kind of stretch out and make as big as, as, as big or as small as you want. So layer 7 is unnecessary. It's the wrong image, so I'm going to left-click on it and drag it down here. And I'm not going to drop, uh, get my finger off the left button until I have validation that it's going into the trash can, delete layer, not this, which is right next to it, called new layer, in which case it actually would create a new layer, basically copying it. So now I have two layers I don't want, and uh, I'm going to come up and just drag them both into the trash, and it should be fine. So let's try this again. Come up here to open image as layer and then go to the very large version of the DeLorean and opening that up, which is, again, absolutely huge. In fact, what we can do is just sort of open the original image and it'll come in sort of at size, uh, which gives me another chance to let you know that you can go around these things like we've been doing. There's another way to do the selection and that's up here in the options in the upper left hand corner when you have lasso selected go to the option here polygonal lasso tool and that lets you sort of click just once at major points around the image instead of dragging the whole thing around and since i want just the front by the way this is a real life example about just how hard it is to do modeling so glad you're along for the journey here we go there we are. So I'm going to control C, cut that, and then control, let's get rid of this layer. It's way too big. Stretch down my layers. Layer seven, no. And in this case, I'm going to simply paste. Control V. Um, this is, as I said earlier, very large. And that's okay because we now have the ability to go up to um, the layers and maybe edit, pre-transform. There we are. So just as we did previous to this, I'm going to come over and press down the shift button and I'll scale everything uniformly so that I can take this much crisper image than the one I had previously and just kind of roll it up here and I'm going to make it larger than I need because I'm going to scale it down further. But uh, now I'm going to mess with the opacity to get it down to 50%. And also I want to get rid of the other front layer because I don't want to see that anymore. Now, uh, one of the things you can do to zoom in and out on this image is you can use this zoom tool. And that means you actually have to select the part you want to zoom in on. There's another way of doing this in Pixlr, which is that you can grab this slider and just kind of go in and out and then grab that red square and move it around the image. I find that a little easier to, to deal with. So we've gotten rid of the, the um, we've actually uh, I've turned off the visibility for the front layer, but I know I simply don't need it, so I'm gonna throw it away. And layer eight, well, that's actually the undercarriage. Under layer. And uh, for the front image here, which is layer eight, I'm just gonna Quickly name that font layer, and then I'm going to go back and add the proper consonant. So I have um, these this sort of boundary to deal with, and uh, one of the things I also want to sort of make sure that I have enough room to do is when I scale in my image uniformly, shift um, the this extra part of the boundary around everything is going to be uh, to my advantage. 
in this case because I am uh, I'm going to try and actually go outside the lines with the the coloring of what I need for this image and that that's going to work in my favor because there we go uh, because I need to make sure that there are no strange see that you may have noticed that in Maya the texture when it's on the car it looks pretty nice but in these areas where the texture doesn't quite cover it it stretches I, I think actually the the well the top is a pretty good example here because this texture does not go all the way to the end it actually now has introduced a black line so the best thing I can do in the image is sort of smudge it over the um, blueprints for that uh, for that particular UV set so if I come in here and mess with the opacity again you can see that UV set so I actually want my texture to sort of exceed it uh, in in all the areas that I can um, and this is where another tool comes in called the smudge tool you can grab that and sort of push out just smudge it out ever so slightly and again this is one of the advantages of low poly I don't want to do that kind of smudging because I don't need to but this smudging that exceeds the boundaries and you, you kind of want to smudge whole uh, colors um, the problem is that it will only let you smudge to the limits of your transformation box so that's why I always wanted to have the transformation box just a little bit outside of the UV set so that it uh, can actually sort of rest on the top there and I want to come in and sort of cut off that which I don't need I'm going to validate that with the opacity first yeah that's fine so I'm going to delete off that back area um, also for the tire layer uh, the American spelling not the UK spelling tire layer we've got this exceeding the boundaries of that UV set as well and I'll show you what I mean by that so that's the UV set and I'll decrease the opacity but that's okay that the black of the tire actually goes beyond this um, goes beyond the UV set because when it goes um, into that stretched area remember that the the treads have been projected from the side as well this black color will stretch all the way over the side of the treads and it'll be um, just fine and actually work in our favor uh, to cover the treads in black so now with all of this stuff saved I'm gonna save once again because the pixeler is out to get me Delorean texture 6 and this is you know I, I have all my reference photos everything downloaded in case I need to recreate this and I'm going to save this now as a JPEG and Delorean texture 6 is just fine because again I, I'm just sort of noodling around this is not the final texture until uh, I've done all the modifications I need but we do get the advantage of reading in what we've done and so you bring up your hypershade and when it looks for the proper texture for this we are we can re merely reassign the the DeLorean texture 6 this will not be the final texture but look how much farther along we've gotten just with that does it need massaging yes you can see the white in the texture is not working out here I gotta sort of um, stretch that take that color and stretch it to the ends smudge it to the ends the front doesn't look bad and the reason that I cut the DMC down the middle is because it kind of looks like that from a distance um, but that's where symmetry works in your favor also the undercarriage of the car I see that I could actually take this area and get rid of that white line by smudging it over the, the UV sets but overall this is not a bad first pass there is massaging I'm gonna to need to make sure things line up as best I can but I intentionally grabbed um, the image of these tires with slight highlights so that it does give a, a tiny bit of realism to the car and overall it's not a bad first pass um, there is as I said some massaging that needs to happen before you turn it in and you always want to look at it from the distance in which it'll be viewed 
But uh, overall, that's pretty much how you get into texturing for your car. Let's take a look at this thing with the UV editor open. And there we are. We now have the ability to see the texture that we've quickly put together. And we can turn on the border edges if we want. Um, I prefer to dim the, the image as well. And uh, overall, it's, it's a pretty cut and dry process. Good luck finding the textures you look, you're looking for. And this, of course, should help you understand that, that the, prod, the, the choice of what you want to model always has repercussions down the line, such as the ease with which you can find the texture for it. So happy texturing, and I'll talk to you in class.